Good morning and welcome to Discipleship Empowerment Word. And we're on our third part of talking about this whole area, given armor for battle. Given armor for battle. And we've been talking about this word stand and how we should take a stand for our Lord Jesus Christ. How Paul is summing up all his teaching to the Ephesian church. And now he's moving him from the whole area of sitting before the Lord walking with the Lord, and now how they can stand with the Lord. And so we're glad that, you've been jo that you're uh, joining us today, and pray that as we talk on our third part about given armor for battle, it's interesting because we have been, you know, so often we think about the armor as the physical part. We got the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth. We've got the shield of faith. We've got the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And we've got the shoes with the gospel, the preparation of peace. And so this is a unique armor that we need to understand. And not only Paul said understand, but we need to pick it up and put it on. <laughs> and I don't believe it's a one-time thing. You know, a lot of times people will say, well, we'll pray on the full armor of God. But you know, the reality is, is just like we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day, we also need to pray on the armor of God every day. Amen. Amen, William. We're glad to see you again today. Praise the Lord to you too. And the regular ones, we are so thankful that you join us. And now we're, so we're going to head over into Ephesians. And we're getting uh, down towards Ephesians chapter 6 which uh, God has given to us, as we've seen the armor, and now he's going to give us to us, I believe, the key to everything in the book of Ephesians. And you may say, what do you mean the key to everything in the book of Ephesians? Well, everything boils down to simply communicating with God. You know, talking to God and letting God talk to you. This whole idea of communication, it's like a telephone. There's a transmitter and there's a receiver. And we need to be communicating. A soldier needs to co communicate with those who are in and over him in the same army. Uh, there needs to be communication back and forth. One of the things that uh, armies try to disrupt uh, right from the very beginning is communication towers, uh, trying to jam the communication, trying to jam, like nowadays they try to jam the internet. Uh, many countries like Myanmar, they will turn the internet right off so you cannot communicate. They will try to turn off certain towers, phone towers, so you can't communicate, send out pictures. You know, the enemy wants to remain in darkness. And Jesus has come to shed light. But the interesting thing is the enemy can't turn off his communication tower. The enemy can't blow up the communication tower of Jesus Christ. You know why? Because we're the communication tower. We're the, we're the cell phone. We're every part when it comes to communicating with our Lord Jesus Christ. And so when he talked about the full armor of God, he then brings us to the place of verse 18, where he says, praying always with all prayer. Because that's what the real battle is all about. I know there is a lot of physical battles. I know a lot of people are going through financial hardships around the world. I know people are going through the increase of things that are costing more and more around the world. All these things are devastating and they affect us greatly physically. People are dying daily because of war around the world. But Paul wants to say, you know, we're in a spiritual battle. Pick up and put on the full armor of God. And then, not only that, but to be praying always in all prayers. You know, Thessalonians talks about, you know, uh, one of the shortest verses that is in the uh, Paul's letters is pray without ceasing. One of the verses, I should say, pray without ceasing. That means to have an attitude a prayer throughout the day. I can tell you that over the last number of years, uh, Conwin and I spend more time in prayer as a husband and wife, but it's easy throughout the day to 
also have an attitude of prayer to be thinking about okay lord what do you want us to do how do you want us to turn do you want us to go right do you want us to go left do you want us to go straight forward and so that whole area of having an attitude of prayer how it becomes part of our character and paul was saying that you can have the full armor of god on but if you're not praying it does not have any effect at all see prayer puts the armor on prayer empowers you to be able to stand so you can fight and prayer is also your communication tower your cell phone and everything else to be able to talk to the Lord and determine his will and so he's saying to us pray always be in an attitude of prayer let it be part of your nature when you're driving along pray when you're walking down the streets pray when you're showering pray <laughs> you know what I mean whatever you're cooking a meal pray you know meditating pray well yeah I thought meditation was prayer well meditation can be reflecting on the Word of God but to take that reflection and then pray and as I said one of the things that that stands out in the country of Myanmar is the the 24 hours seven days a week prayer times you know uh, some of the times when I've been on the long the front lines of war and things like that and I know this I remember going uh, we were in an IDP camp up into the mountains along the front lines of war and they had little bamboo prayer booths and then in front of that was another kind of larger bamboo booth and people were allowed to have 15 minutes at a time so you would either sign up and come back at your time or you would like us of course they made room for Colwyn and I and then they would pray Another thing that I, I enjoyed so, mu so much is that in the Ketchin State, in Michna where we live, outside of Michna, maybe, I don't know, 20 miles outside of Michna is Prayer Mountain. And it's a unique place because you go up onto this mountain and you can see over the whole valley, you can see the river valley, you can see uh, for a long ways, it's, it's a, a journey to get there. But then you walk upstairs and you, Less than 10 miles. okay, around ten miles, okay, and and uh, so when we get there, it's interesting. You can go up a prayer tower, where you can be praying over the community, over the countryside, over the people. Uh, then, but then you can go to another kind of a hill. Uh, there's kind of a double hill up on top of the prayer mountain. Uh, like, and so then you could come down from the prayer tower and then go over to another hill. And there is, I guess you would say, it was, is the prayer mountain too. And, and up there might be at least 50 little booths where you can go in and pray. Uh, there will be a little carpet on the floor. There will be a little raised up area that you could put your Bible or your prayer request. Uh, some of them, if you need it more intimate, as uh, in the prayer circle, there was a door you could go in and close. Uh, there was two levels of that, two stories of just these rooms that are just probably um, maybe three feet wide by four feet long. They're not very big. And, if, and uh, sometimes even when Colwyn and I wanted to pray together, we kind of had to get kind of get in there uh, really close uh, because of you know but it it what it did it, it reminded you of, of going into your prayer closet and praying and that is one thing that has powerfully uh, when you don't have all the necessities when you don't have all the wealth that we have on this side of the world where you can where you can pretty well buy anything either with cash or credit you can there's very little that a lot of people can not do nowadays it's not you get the best of everything but you have a lot of freedoms where over there a lot of times you just have to even pray lord provide me for my meal today provide me for what i'm going to eat provide me for enough gasoline <laughs> a bottle we used to buy bottles of gasoline a little bit bigger than this 
and that would you would put it in your motorcycle and and that's what you would drive you know and so over there prayer is such an important part and it's interesting that they that in Myanmar they've been under a physical battle for many many years but what it has drawn the church to do is to enter into a spiritual warfare they know it's not so much against flesh and blood but it's against principalities and powers they know that the power of prayer can change things we don't have that yet in North America did you hear me we don't have that yet in North America Oh, we'll call a 24-hour fast, and we'll sometimes have a, you know, a time where we go and fast and pray for a season or for a night or whatever it may be. But the idea of having separate places set aside uh, throughout the church and the countryside where people can, can go in every 15 minutes and pray and talk to God. You know, so it's interesting. You could say Prayer Mountain is also their communication tower <laughs> it's where no matter what kind of bombings go on in Myanmar you know and and it's interesting I've been getting a lot of pictures you know we we've been focused on a war over in Europe but the war you know every time something that that the enemy can get people to look at something over there the enemy does all kinds of things over here and there's still a big battle going on Places being bombed and destroyed in many countries around the world. It's not just one country, it's many countries. We're in a physical warfare, but the only way we can confront that physical warfare is by doing spiritual prayer, spiritually fighting. And that's why Paul says to them, okay, I've talked to you about the full armor now and what you need to do with that on. When you get that armor on and you need to come together now and link up one with another in prayer so that you become an army. There's, it's, it's no good when we're just, I mean, I can't say it's no good. That's not true, sorry. But the idea of just praying always by yourself is it, there is more power when the army comes together. You know, you can have one soldier that will run out with his sword or with his gun against another army and he may not last too long. But if you come together as an army in prayer and take a stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, the enemy is pushed back. And so putting on the full armor of God, we put it on by prayer, and it should be put on daily. But not only that, as we put it on, that we gather together one with another in the army of God and begin to build a prayer tower of prayer, you know, that's going forth. You know, and as I said yesterday, how often in the times of the Second World War, when when so many bodies were, were being brought home, so many people were physically dying, and people were wondering about, you know, will they get the next telegram saying their son or daughter has died. And so the church began to rally together in prayer. Prayer meetings night after night, all night prayer meetings. And the war began to change because there's power in prayer. And so pray always with all praying and supplication in the Spirit. So now he's not only connecting us into a deeper idea, but now he's connecting us into praying always and always in supplication. And this idea means to entreat. It means to appeal. It means to make application. It's kind of an idea, this idea of supplication. So you're not just praying, you know, random prayers. But now you're coming with a, a specific appeal, as it were, an application for a certain situation where you're following it through in prayer, Paul was saying. And he's saying that when you pray, when you're praying always, and you're asking and talking to God that you're doing this in the Spirit of God. You know, every telecommunication tower has to have power to make it work. Our cell phones wouldn't work. What we're doing today, if there was no power, it wouldn't work in the tower. That's why they have backup generator systems and that. That's why sometimes during the biggest storms, you can still... Uh, even though your hydro goes out, your land phone will still work, uh, the old ones, and 
for a while, your cell phones will still work because they have backup power. And we don't understand that when we are coming to Jesus Christ in prayer and we're coming to him in supplication, we're not relying on the power of this world, but we're relying on the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when we come together, it's like a bunch of batteries being uh, parallel, connected together. There is even greater power that can last for longer times. So we need to be coming together in power. And he's saying that that power, that when we come together, we're coming together in prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And while we're in the Spirit, isn't it interesting? While we're praying in the Spirit, what is he asking us to do? To be watchful to this end. You know, with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So we're not only praying for ourselves, but we're praying for all the saints. We're praying for the body ministry of Jesus Christ. We're continuing to come with appeals, but we're coming with perseverance, you know, Sometimes the old body is just tired. Sometimes, you know, we're feeling weak. But perseverance is when you're pressed through. You know, it's like running that marathon. And at first, at first maybe half marathon, you've kind of done okay. But the perseverance is pressing through until the finish line. Until the finish line. And that's the thing that a lot of times we as Christians... When we're praying, we, we throw up a prayer through the prayer lines and the telecommunications. And maybe we pray about it for one or two days. But Paul was saying, but now we need to persevere. An army needs to persevere. A spiritual army needs to persevere. And persevering gives the idea that you keep going and going and going and going until the prayer is met or to, until an answer is given, or until the enemy is subdued. That means a lot of praying. And so sometimes when we pray over in North America, we're just, you know, we you know put up a quick prayer for our son or daughter, put up a quick prayer for, uh, you know, our grandchildren or our neighbor or our moms and dads or those who are not well. But the idea of persevering, uh, there was many times, uh, I, I want to say the second time, when Irene got cancer, that, uh, and I'm talking about, she had cancer when the first time when she was younger, and then she got cancer the second time. And uh, I was blessed to be able to stay alongside her and persevere in prayer, to do fasting and praying. And it was during that time that God raised her up for another three more years to be able to go out and fulfill some of those burdens that were on her heart. And one of them was to go to Myanmar. And that was an answer to one of her prayers. I know we sometimes say it was an answer to the bucket list that may, she may have. And it was like after some of those things were answered, it was like she said to me, now I'm ready to go home. And it was three years later that said, the Lord said, okay, it's time. Come on into the place that I prepared for you. And it was during prayer that God gave her a vision of heaven or where she was going and the place that she was staying, and the beauty of heaven itself. And it was a joy for me to continue to persevere, to press on in prayer. And I don't think we get that in North America. They get that in the Ketchin state. They get that in other countries when they're under physical war or famine or starvation. When there is no other place to turn but prayer, that's when they get it. And we need to get into the place of understanding. That's where we need to go. We need to come together and get on the full armor of God. Then we need to be empowered by God through prayer and supplication. And then together, as we are coming together as an army of God, then the power of God comes on not only us individually, but corporately in unity and harmony where we can push back the enemy. And that's what Paul was concerned about for the Ephesian church. That's why he begins to fi say to us finally in verse 10, Finally, this is how you take a stand. And this is how you get your strength. This is how you get your power. Don't just put on the armor of God and think you're safe. Now you need to activate the armor of God. And the way you activate the armor of God and activate the soldier is through prayer. 
we need to come together in prayer. And so he says that, you know, pray always. And to pray one for another or to pray for the saints, for each other. I hope that you're finding time around the people who listen. I, I'm so excited to see that people in Myanmar who are in war, the Kechen are in war. Many of them are raising up and they're praying for the, for the Ukrainian people who are in war because they understand it. I'm excited where I see fellow Christians are putting up things on Facebook about praying for Ukraine. But I would encourage you to not only have Ukraine, but to add to it Myanmar and many of the other uh, Soviet-type countries or many of the other dictate dictatorships around the world where, where, the, where the gospel is, the enemy is trying to put it under his feet. And the thing is, Jesus Christ is raising up an army. You know, his kingdom... And you know, his kingdom is growing. Why? You know, we don't sometimes get the understanding, but when Jesus comes back, you know, he comes back with an army. Did you know that? <laughs> Read the book of Revelation and you'll find that out. Then Paul goes on and says, not only to pray and put on the armor of God and to pray what God is wanting to do with you and the church, but then he's saying, okay, but also remember to pray for me. He goes on, she so says, for pray, you know, this idea, pray for me that the utterances may be given to me. So he's saying, pray for me that the Lord would give me the wisdom and knowledge on what to share, what to teach you. I pray that every day when I talk to you every day. I'm praying that God would give me the utterances, the what we should speak and what we should share. We're praying about it. You know, often day in and day out, Colwyn and I have been talking a lot about it the last number of days and are, we'll probably talk more about it again today to hear the voice of God and to pray that God would give us the utterances that are important for this day and age, to give us the ability to know what to write, what to share, how to encourage. And he says, and for me that the utterances may be given, there's our word given, given to me that God would speak to me, that I may open my mouth boldly. So here, it's interesting that we put on the full armor of God. We ask God to strengthen us and empower us through prayer. Why? So that when we go into battle, we'll be able to speak boldly. See, there's this interconnection between the world and also the spiritual. But whether we understand or not, putting on the full armor of God is in the spiritual because he said you don't fight against flesh and blood. But also there is a physical th war going on where people's souls are at stake and we need to speak boldly to them about the need to come to Christ as their Lord and Savior. You know, being a secret service Christian doesn't really work. We need to speak boldly. And the world is wanting to take that voice away from the church. And the world is trying to put that voice into a box of darkness. But Paul was saying, you know, let's come on, church, let's rise up. Let's rise up and put on the armor of God. Let us rise up and walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, being watchful for what the enemy is trying to do. So that as we are walking in that place, we can walk with all boldness and to make known. See, he goes on, he says, not only do we walk in boldness. And see, <clears throat> people are, the church is walking in boldness, but they're walking in boldness on the wrong items. What? Yeah, I hear a lot of Christians and, I, and I'm trying to avoid some of the, the things because I don't think it's important. But when I look at what Christians are saying, and they're praying that God give me boldness in these areas. Do you want to see what it says here? That we had boldness to do what? To make known the mystery of the gospel. To make known the mystery of the gospel. We put on the full armor of God. We come to God in prayer, praying always in supplication and prayer, so that we would be filled with the power of God, so we can make known the boldness of the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I know some of you around the world are watching. Thank God for some of you catch in. I've been watching today too. 
from Myanmar, some others are watching from various places around the country. Prayer, praying always and giving ourselves a prayer and supplication is so that we can be empowered with boldness to make known the mystery of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. So we got a lot of people doing boldness according to the things of this world. We got a lot of people who are making bold statements concerning the things of this world. But to move into the spiritual realm, we need to make bold statements about the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to stand up in the physical realm and explain and exhort the mysteries of the gospel that Jesus Christ was sent by God the Father to this earth to redeem it, to set it free. That's the biggest battle that we forget. We're so busy being caught up in all kinds of physical battles and worldly battles, not realizing that the biggest battle that we're fighting is for the souls of people, for the kingdom of heaven. That's where Christ, as our commander-in-chief, the head of the body, is uniting us together so that we can come forth and not spend all our time, you know, doing things in the physical side, but in the sense and talking about all the physical issues. But that we rise up and we're emboldened by the power of the Holy Spirit to speak the mystery of the gospel. His life, his death, his resurrection, his ascension, his empowering the church, his coming back, and his kingdom which will reign forever. That's the good news of the gospel. That's what people need to hear. That's what people, you know, that's why we're trying to get out David's song. I thank God there's a lady working on it right now that's that's translating. I'm sure it will be done in the next week. She's translating David's song in the Russian. We're still praying for someone to translate it into Ukrainian so that we can continue to flood out. Yes, there is horrible things going on in the physical realm. But Paul is saying, pray always that you can rise up and realize that you're in a spiritual battle and we need to pray and we need to get out into the highways and byways the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul will tell them, that's why I'm in prison. That's why he was in prison when he was writing this letter. And they're going to wonder, why are you there? You talk about the power of God. You talk about Because Paul realized he was not fighting physical things. He realized that even in prison, he wasn't limited to physical things. But what he saw was the most important was to put on the whole armor of God, to put on power of prayer and supplication, to push back the enemy so that in this world that there would be still opportunities that the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ would go forward. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? What we need is an army that's going to gather together. We need a church that's going to gather together and not fight amongst each other and fight about worldly issues, but that are going to gather together and say, Oh God, give us a boldness so we can go out and speak the mysteries of of the gospel of Jesus Christ, so that more will come into the kingdom of heaven. That's what the battle is all about. Not trying to put down all these other terrible things. I'm not doing that at all. But we need to move it to another level. We need to be like the catch-in where we move it to another level and we get into 24 hours a day prayer, seven days a week, beseeching our God, bringing our supplications, our appeal before the Lord, Asking the Lord to help us to have the wisdom and knowledge to be able to be clothed with the full armor of God spiritually so that the enemy cannot attack us, that the enemy cannot destroy us spiritually, and then pray that God would give us the boldness to go out with the gospel. So Paul says, pray always for the saints. Paul goes on and says, pray for me that I have boldness. Then thirdly, Paul just even adds more to this, and he says, Pray for which I am an ambassador in change. Here he's saying, now he tells what's really going on. He says, I want to tell you right now that I'm an ambassador of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And everybody would say, yeah, we know that, Paul. You're always talking about the gospel. You're always writing about the gospel. But he said, you know, I'm an ambassador in chains. Yes, he had physical chains. But he also had spiritual chains. What do you mean by spiritual chains? He was bound to Jesus Christ. He was a servant of the Lord. Wherever the Lord called him to go, he would go. Whatever the Lord would ask him to serve in, he would serve. Because he was praying that the Lord's will would be done in his life. And being knowing that the Lord's will makes him an ambassador. He knew that even in Rome, he was in chains. He was under the Roman guard. He knew that he was a Jew also. And he was being persecuted and harassed as a Jew, as a believer. And now he can say to them, but this is not my kingdom. This is not where I live. For I am an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And even though I may be physically in chains right now, spiritually I am free in Christ. Are you getting it? He says, for I am an ambassador in chains, that, I, that in it, that as an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak, what? Here he is again, that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. As we conclude today, I want us to think about, are we speaking boldly as we ought to speak according to the gospel of Jesus Christ? And I would say the majority of people, disciples, and Christians are not. Who oh, you're being hard on us today, Pastor Jim. No, I'm just reading the Word of God, and it says that we're to put on the full armor of God. It says that we put it on and we begin to have prayer and supplication. Why? So that we can give forth the gospel, and that we can understand that as a soldier of Jesus Christ, that we're an ambassador of Christ, that we may be able to go out, speak boldly, and speak it as I ought to speak. Not as I ought to think, but as I ought to speak. And what do I ought to speak? I need to speak the gospel of Jesus Christ. And speak it with boldness. And put the enemy back with boldness. Not with my power, not with my authority, but with his strength and with his power. Putting on the full armor of God. Being completely covered over so that I may go forth with the gospel that my feet are prepared with the gospel of peace so that I may go forward and speak it boldly that's what I pray for day in and day out that I can keep pressing in and pressing back the enemy and speak boldly the gospel of Jesus Christ it's time to stop speaking so boldly about all the other things that we think we have some idea about. But maybe it's time to make a change and confess to the Lord, Lord, I've been putting my boldness in the wrong camp. Where I need to put my boldness is in the power of you, Jesus, and to speak forth the power and the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the biggest mystery of it is that you may think you're in physical chains, but in the power of the Holy Spirit, the captives have been set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me today? Are you grasping what Paul is trying to elevate all this above? That you sit with Christ, that you walk with Christ, and that now you'll be able to stand with Christ. And you'll be able to stand that no matter what the enemy throws against you, you are firmly planted on the rock of Jesus Christ. Firmly planted on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the enemy cannot push you back. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Let's pray. Father, well, Lord, you're speaking to us a lot of things today. And, Lord, you're speaking deeply into my heart, Lord. And you're reminding that my boldness of speaking is not to be bold in the things of this world, but to be bold in your gospel. Oh, Father, help that the boldness of you would go forth, the power and anointing of you would go forth, that you would cover us all with the full armor of God, all parts of the armor. You would cover us from our top of our head to the tip of our toes. Lord, that we would come and understand that the power is that as we are covered as a soldier, the power that, that ignites the, the strength 
of the soldier and the power of the soldier is the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit empower us that we may pray for one another that we may speak boldly with all boldness your gospel and so Jesus I ask that today when we have been sidetracked on many other things spending hours and hours communicating about all kinds of other things that do not that will not expand the kingdom of heaven but lord i know that what will expand the kingdom of heaven is when we speak boldly the gospel of jesus christ and jesus thank you lord that you want to embolden us that you want to infire us that you want us to stand up not in our strength but in your strength and so lord we ask this today that as we have looked into your word and heard what paul has said that how he not only to pray always but to pray for each one of us who are speaking and teaching like he was. And then, Lord, to realize that we need to pray, pray that we are ambassadors of you. That this is not our home. This is not our kingdom. But, Jesus, our home is you and our kingdom is your heaven. And we give you thanks for it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I just pray today that you will share this message with somebody else. Take some boldness <laughs> and get people to realize that we need to get into the Word and the Word needs to get into us. To realize that we need to get clothed with the full armor of God. To realize that we need to gather together in prayer so that we can have the power and strength to be able to boldly go out and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We love you. <laughs> And we're trying to encourage you to keep on keeping on. And I thank God that I can be an ambassador in chains for Christ. And I just pray that God's blessing will be upon you. And Lord willing, we hope to see you again tomorrow. Amen. Bye-bye for now.